back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing good. Are you doing good? Let me know down below how your day has been going. I really want to know. Um, we're going to react to the March of Valiant Philippine Expeditionary Force to Korea. This was requested numerous, numerous, numerous times after I reacted to other videos about the war with Korea and the Filipinos that fought in the war. Um, these are legendary, legendary people, you know. They... They were a small number of, of Filipinos that fought such a big, 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 big number of Chinese, Koreans, and whoever was on that side of the war. And uh, just amazing. So we're going to learn a lot of facts in this one that we didn't learn in the other reactions that we uh, reacted to. That's what I've been told anyway. So let's go ahead and get into it. It's kind of a long video, but it's going to be well worth it. So stick around throughout the entire video so we can talk about it. Uh, in the comment section down below, and I'll talk about it once the video is completed. So let's go ahead and react to it. If you like the reaction, you like my channel, definitely hit the subscribe button, become part of the Max Reaction family. But for now, let's react. June 25th, 1950, North Korean Communist Army stormed across the 38th parallel to invade South Korea. Such a terrible, bloody, horrible time. 135,000 North Communists marched southward and captured Seoul, the South Korean capital, in just two days. Dang! Two days. The biggest city capital fallen. U.S. sent forces to help defend South Korea. We're, but we're eventually overpowered and forced to temporarily retreat. So we need some Filipinos! <laughs> UN appeals to allied nations for reinforcements. September 1950. The war broke out in 1950. Immediately, the Philippine government, under the leadership of President Elpidio Quirino, offered to support. Wow. So at that time, you know, we still are uh, recovering from the damage of World War II. Right. We have to sacrifice to fulfill the commitment of our country to help a member nation in need. And he says the price of... I gotta hold it, stop it for a second. That's just amazing. It's amazing. Really, really think about it. Really think about it. You're just in World War II. You're, you're not even recovered. The Philippines is not recovered from World War II because we know how many bad things happened in World War II. And there's such honorable people that they're going to say, yes, we're going to go help defend in Korea. We're going to help defend. We're going to put our lifelines, life on the line to defend South Korea from the communists. I mean, that's just mind-blowing. That's amazing. That just shows you, shows you how dedicated the Filipino people are, you know? The freedom was something that we fought for with our blood. Yes. And we we're going to do it again. Authorized under an act of Congress, Republic Act 573, which was passed in early September 1950. It provided the legal authority for a total of five different Philippine battalion combat teams. That's impressive. Battalions to help defend the beleaguered South Koreans. And that Koreans needed it. They needed a lot of help. They needed that Filipino fight. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. I know you know. The Philippines sent five battalion combat teams to Korea with a total strength of 7,420 officers and men. And it was only through the idea of President Trino. Now, we volunteered. We were never forced. And was young. And we were trained, so we were prepared. Absolutely. And since we had all volunteered, we were a very happy bunch, in spite of <laughs> the fact that we anticipated hardships and deathly threats on the Korean front. I'm not going to lie, like, watching the first few minutes, I'm not going to stop it a lot through this, but I got to, I got to, I got to tell you something, like, I don't have Filipino blood running through me. I don't. My wife does. She's from the Philippines. My son, you know, one of my sons do. Uh, the baby in her belly does, but I don't. But watching just the first few minutes of this, listening to these old-time Filipinos that fought in these wars, it gives me a sense of pride. And, you know, 
I'm not from the Philippines. I was born in the United States, but my family, we are a Filipino-American family, and it gives me pride to watch these old-time guys, how brave they was, how dedicated they was, and um, how fierce they were. It just gives me pride. It makes me feel like there's some Filipino blood running through me. It really does. But let's check this out. Let's keep going. At Tucson, still another nation joins the growing UN command as 1,200 men of a cracked Philippine regimental combat team come ashore. This is so amazing. This video is gonna be really good. I'm glad you recommended it. It's got me fired up. Like, I want, I want to know. I want to know. Fidel V. Ramos. Which president was that? What number? Like, the fifth, the fourth, what? <laughs> I'm excited for this. I really am. I love history. I love knowing Philippine history. Makes me closer to my wife, you know? Look at that. Well, when you arrive at Korea, about uh, five, six of uh, South Korea was occupied by the North Koreans. Most of Only it. One sixth was uh, occupied by the Allied forces then. That's just a sliver. Just a sliver. When we arrived there in Busan, I saw Korea badly beaten. Ruins. Then the, the civilians were bringing their packs, moving. Oh. You could see movement all around, back and forth, back, because everybody didn't know where to go. That's so Children terrible. Crying. And most of the children were very skinny. All in tattered clothes, hungry, begging for food. Oh. We sympathize with them because we already suffered the same consequences yes. during World War II when the Japanese started bombing. Yes, our yes. They know. We give them food. But I was saying, uh, their parents will come rushing towards us also and beg for food. The whole people there, Talagang, they're starving. Oh. Very sad plight. Very destructive and communism. That's why we were expecting that we were facing trouble. Then from there, we were transferred to Sariwon. Now, this is the first time we noticed the cold. Oh, the cold, yeah. The coldest time during 100 years. It was about 15 degrees below zero. It gets that cold in Korea? Woo! That is cold, especially for a Filipino. It was 11 November, when we started the first patrol between Myojong up to Shinji, I was leading the group because I was with the tanks. But the farther, farther is the battery jeeps. Now we reinforce them. Then followed by two companies, the Abel and Baker companies. Then before we have to cross the hill, which was dividing the area between towns, we have to cross a bend. Now, in that bend, further, there was Ooh. a fortified area by the North Koreans. That's so Somebody dangerous. The hill. There are four lines of trenches. So, when we were able to clear that area, they started firing at us. These men are so brave. It's a fortified area by the North Koreans, and they're marching towards it. They're going to clear it. They're on a mission, and they're not going to stop until that mission's complete. You feel me? It was so surprising that talagang everybody cannot move because I'm with the tank, no ko sinalim. Sa tank mayroong periscope. I tried to look, nakita ko, no, nobody was moving because talagang firing at that area. Pati yung tanki ko na pasubsob doon sa ano, ang ginawa ko, pinataas ko. Taas ko, nakita ko. Yung mga North Korean troops, they were already talking of maybe attacking um, wow. the soldier. The first thing is safety. And instead of defending yourself, you attack. That's your reaction. <laughs> to kill, to live. Right. You gotta kill to live. In the tank, there's a turret, there's a machine gun. That's that's just so intense, you know. Machine gun, sa ingay lang, mati moralize kayo. Lakas si, tuk 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 tuk. Ang pinaw ng pisa ko nung ganon, nagtakbuhan, nagtubatakbo din tira, 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 tira. I got to the point that all of them were nailed down. 
Okay, that's time. Yung mga tao ha namin, nag, ano na, nag-attack. Uh, <laughs> Dami nila, tumati na sa'yo, wala nakatama. Maybe it was God sent fortune, ano. Ngayon, after that, nung nahupa niya, about mga 30 minutes, uh, there were about 42 dead, at saka about uh, wow. 100 wounded. I could list. Ngayon, yung Amerikano, kinakongratulit ako because of that. Then after that, we proceeded to Shinji. I could listen to him all day, talk about what he's been through. I could. Immediately after the Battle of Myodong, winter had already set in. Oh. The problem was that their uniforms that were issued to them earlier on were not sufficient. Colonel Sir, and here's his leadership. Until such time that you give us this necessary yes. equipment to fight the enemy, we will not move. Gotta well, stay warm. And Colonel Ojeda took over. It was a very sad thing. You you need to stay warm. Just in like World War One, you know. Uh, the cold, it, or World War Two, it it totally like changed the war of it. The cold did. The weather, the weather. So you know the Filipinos, they're not only fighting humans and terrible, terrible people. They're fighting the weather too. You know. Pagkatapos niyan, come April na, pumunta kami sa further north. Now, there was a report that they are going to attack the UN troops. Yun doon naman sa Yuldong. Just then, the Chinese and the Koreans were inaugurating the first phase of what they called Chinese Spring Offensive. Oh, that sounds, that sounds bad. <laughs> It's a lot of soldiers. Ano yan si Yuldong? Ang Tempe City nandito, to the right of the Bay City, were the Turks, and to the left of them were the Puerto Ricans. There were now uh, eminent signs that uh, they were being attacked by the communists in mass. What the Chinese did was they massed their forces in the center, penetration. Dito nung atake sa atin. And then less strong forces on the side. There were Chinese who were able to penetrate the oh. ranks of the Turks. The Turks, They retreated. They retreated. They gave way. Kaya nakapasok sila, nakapasok sila dito sa amin, na-encircle kami. Here come now the Tent B City holding on to their line. My goodness. Using the bayonet, hand to hand. Use of hand grenades and so on and so forth. Kulang lang siguro, durahan na lang. According to Voltaire, God, is always on the side of the greater battalion. Yes, okay, sir. You're only 700. When the Koreans and the Chinese had about 700,000. <laughs> Did you hear that? 700 verse, what was it? 700,000? Oh my gosh. Like, really, you gotta have God on your side. You gotta have no fear on your side. You gotta have I mean, you guys are legends. If you if you stand up in the face of that many men and say, I am not going to get defeated, you're a legend. You're a legend. And you're vital. You're vital to this war. Because if these 700 fell, then the war is over. It's over. The communism wins. And we don't know what the Philippines may look like. We may not know what America looks like now. It, it could, we could all be communists now if these men fell. That's how big and important these men are. Hold on, baby, hold on. According to the testimony of the defenders, piles of dead were there, piles of dead. Look at that. Namatay yung si Captain niya at saka si Lieutenant Arciaga, yung dalawang yun hero. Yes, they are heroes. The Lieutenant and Captain, they died. Look at them. Wow. Much love, much respect for them. Makes me sad, you know, that they had to die. I was assigned as the reconnaissance platoon leader of the reconnaissance company of the 20th Battalion Combat Team Pep Talk, then under Colonel Salvador Abcede. 
Salvador Abisadi. Yes, we were rushed to the front lines in Korea. Front lines. You volunteer, you're going to the front line. Woo. We took a railroad that took us to the north of Seoul, the capital of South Korea. Woo. And passed beyond the 38th parallel where the rear echelon of the 20th Battalion Combat Team, PEPTOP, was uh, stationed. And uh, after spending overnight there, we were uh, taken to our frontline positions, also the 38th parallel, in the uh, vicinity of the city of Chorobon, which is already part of North Korea. In North Korea, on the front lines. During the third week of May, our battalion decided that it is now or never, and I was picked by the battalion commander wow. who did the assault. And this is how I, myself, got into the big battle for Hill Eri. Hill Eri. And, uh, I was assigned to do this with my platoon of about 40, 45 men. That's small, small amount of men. We started big hearts. the approach to the enemy fortifications at about maybe four o'clock in the morning. And uh, in May, in North Korea, four in the morning is still very dark and very cold. Right. When we got to no man's land, after a truck ride of about 30 minutes, we had to creep and crawl. If you don't, you're dead. If you don't, there's too many of them. Wow. For most of that period within no man's land, we had to prod with our bayonets on whether there are mines planted with tripwires in the rice fields. It was very dangerous. Yeah, it is. I wasn't even thinking about the mines. Can you imagine? After about two hours of creeping and crawling, we saw really more clearly the enemy fortifications, which were our targets. We informed headquarters that we were here already in the assault line, we called it, ready to jump off towards the hill, but give us first the preparatory fires that we had planned. Yes. Drop some on the air and then charge in. It's and strategic. These were from the fighter planes of the supporting American forces that dropped napalm bombs along the target area. Look at all those. In the meantime, we were advancing up the hill, but when the napalm bombs were falling too closely to us and endangered our troops. I wow. told headquarters to cease fire on that and then bring in the artillery. <laughs> oh my goodness. They ain't playing around. This is now or never. Napon, artillery. And with the forward observer, Lieutenant Cosme Acosta, he did a good job of bringing in our artillery to bear upon the target area. And we continued advancing upward. When uh, we were too close to the uh, enemy positions, we called for ceasefire of the yes. artillery. But we asked for tank direct fire. And, and tank? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. From our supporting forces in the back. And so the tanks being able to fire directly at the target, almost in a straight line, started firing. <laughs> My goodness. Napalm, artillery, tank fire. We, firing. we continued to advance to very near the top of the enemy uh, fortification. And these special men right and here. When it was time to do it, I said, lift the tank fires, we're going to attack. <laughs> the bunkers and the foxholes of the enemy one by one and we attack them with rifle fire flush them out and in some cases with demolitions the hand-to-hand -hand combat lasted for about 30 to 45 minutes and that's forever and I determined that the enemy resistance had died down and I started accounting for my men and I found out that they were all present accounted for except for one or two that were wounded I was very proud of the fact that we accomplished our mission. Can you imagine deep North Korea in a fortified uh, place where North Koreans everywhere, communists everywhere, 
and they don't lose one single person. Now they are truly badasses. They are truly G.I. Joes. They are truly special forces if I've ever seen it. It's just an amazing story, but a true, true story. Can you imagine? My goodness, can you imagine? Well, of course, uh, personally, I was very thankful to the good Lord for uh, saving the troops. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the 19th uh, BCT came in. I appreciate with the turnover from the 28th BCT turned over to us. Raymond Z. Aguilar. My dad was fascinated by flying, first of all. Now, that was his hobby. And when he saw that many soldiers were being sent to the front, he came to my grandfather, then President Quirino, and said, Papa, I want to go to war. And my grandfather looked at him and says, well, if you go to war, then my son has to go with you. Dad used to say, when Lolo told me that I had to serve in the Korean War, of course I feared. I feared for my life. I didn't want my children to be fatherless. Right. So that was my greatest fear. But the love for my father and my sense of duty to him as his son overtook any fears that I had. And so I said, yes, Papa, I will do it. Wow. Imagine, you know, the pres is president's son, right? Go on the war. Go on the war when he doesn't have to. But he's going to. That's just amazing, you know? Um, a lot of people in high-ranking places that are related to, like, presidents or rulers of countries around the world, they're cowards. They would never do it. This man's not a coward. This man is awesome. Wow. That was the story of how both first Lieutenant Tomas Quirino and Luis Chito Gonzalez joined the war. It was just like Quirino to send his only son at that time and his only son-in-law to the war. Wow. Because when he said the Philippines goes to war, he'll send his own family first. I don't know. Can you see goosebumps? I got goosebumps here. That's just amazing. This is an amazing, amazing story. Why haven't I watched this sooner? Luis Rosales, your Saudi Barbizi, Ferido, pilot Davon Pepco Fide. Saudi He was a spotter pilot. He would go on this small plane at very high altitude and look for the enemy and relay the information back to the base so that they could either fire artillery or have other planes uh, with armament go there because his plane had no armament at all. Dad was assigned to desk duties in the beginning. Signal she. He makes sure that all communication to the line to everyone has to be connected, that they properly connected, can be contacted anytime. Because you don't go to combat without communication. Right. Signal is That's death if you don't. Because at this time he was married to the first lady of the Philippines, my mother, no? So Sigur, they wanted to give him some type of preferential treatment and he didn't like that at all. Right. So he wrote to them and he said for them to please give him combat missions. My mother even said to me that your father, quote unquote, would do anything to measure up in the eyes of his father in the <laughs> sense of esteem and respect. So he kept telling the officer, I, I want to see action. Yes. I want to see action. It makes... I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> to a ship to nine Jamestown. And that's about three miles long stretch of defense of the enemy forces. And in five days, we were sent to the Tabon Hills. And that is Hill 191. And hit it towards the stem of the bowl where the one regiment of Chinese are there. And we had a four days battle Whew. with the population. Four days. That is rough. Terrible, you know, terrible. Oh. You can just imagine an artillery bomb dropping just in front of you, a few yards away, and then you're in the height of battle. If this is the hill that we occupied, the enemy was already crawling up, 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 and our firearms didn't sila 
para oh. ayudar, ¿no? My company commander was requesting for firing position. I mean, it didn't sound a little bit like that. What about you now? That is bleak, you know. It's... The odds are against you, you know. They really are. But uh, my battalion commander didn't approve it. Tito rin. Pero bang stop by again. Battle after four days, there was a recording from the 45th Division. Oh. No less than 500 enemy oh. troops killed by our artillery alone. 500! From those who we encountered, you know, Makayap sa Abing Hill, Garapate Damid, Samarabe, they suffered a lot. Wow! This fortune. Alam mo, pati sa akin, is just lucky. I never thought with people how many thousands there firing at me. Niya ko tinaman. It's a question of lucky. It is luck, you know. It's skill, luck. Heroic. Yes, very determined. That is the statement of a lifetime. My mother was totally worried. She kept writing to my father, come home soon. I miss you, sweetheart. She would apologize. I am so sorry <laughs> to keep bothering you. Now you just but love I him. I haven't heard from you all this time. Yeah. She and just loved him. The stories of my mom, on the other hand, she showed me some of the love letters of that oh. to her. He was pretty romantic. He said he missed the family. He wanted to be home. It must have been quite challenging. For yes. Him. I remember him saying it was the worst time of my life. <laughs> it was freezing. Oh. We were freezing. The biggest enemy that they had was weather. the weather, actually, and homesick. In Dad the war, never left behind get home. Any memoirs. But he did send letters to my mom telling her that finally he got his wish and that he's pretty happy that he came home alive. Yes. The experience. I was initially assigned to the 7th Battalion Combat Team of Colonel Napoleon de Valeriano of the Nita unit. Then, uh, after about a year, I was given orders to join the 14th BCT. Look at all these heroes in this. I mean... When we left the president, the Kirino sent us up, he was at the pier. And he told them, just before they left for Korea, and I will quote, I sent ahead of you my only son and my son-in-law to offer their blood in the defense of democracy. Thus, my pride will be that with my own flesh and blood, I shall have participated in your coming struggle and victory for the honor and prestige of our country. Wow. That is what he said. We relieved the 19th at Pike Saxon under the chestnut orchard. Then we were moved to Christmas Hill. That was our last battle. What a march. What we a march. We American battalion who suffered a lot of casualties. So almost wiped out of the one battalion of the 45th Division. To replace them, we had to climb up the hills. And then when we went up that hill, down, sometimes you vomit the, the smell of the plant. My but goodness. We didn't have any level. You get used to it. Smell of flesh. After the Christmas hill, then the Chinese attempted the several time to recover the hill. They throw in 
battalion, chapter battalion, in the play. As much casualties. They throw in ev- practically everything. Parang, ubusin na yung bala. It's like New Year. <laughs> right? Use it all, don't die with it. When you fight back in that war, you have everything you need. Artillery, fire support, tank support, aircraft. You can ask for and fire support. You need it too. You really do. It's it's a team effort, like it really is. We held on to the Christmas Hill up to the time the truce was implemented. To awesome. expect ten in the evening, ceasefire now. We well silent and then everybody was out thinking about going home and then be thankful to that you are alive and kicking. Yes. It makes you feel good. Absolutely. Wow. This is an amazing story. When I went to Korea, there was already a truce, but everything was still on a war footing. There was the main battle position, the demarcation line between the two Koreas, which both sides guarded. The North Koreans guarded the north side with the right. south side. On the lines, your duty there would be to look through binoculars and you monitor the movement of the enemy on the other side. You gotta keep an eye on them, that's for sure. When the uh, armed forces decided that there was no longer need for the BCT in Korea, the orders were for the BCT to come home. But on the last minute, they said a contingent of one officer and ten enlisted men must stay behind, and I was the one chosen. So because of that, while the rest of the battalion went home, I was there for an additional uh, one month and a half. Right. It's important to keep an eye on them, though, you know? You can't trust them. Our contingent was myself, only one officer and ten enlisted men. And we spent the last day more or less turning on equipment, so we were in fatigues and uh, we were not really in very clean state. While we were waiting for our plane to Tokyo, all of a sudden, there was a major with all of the guy ropes asking, where's the officer of the departing Philippine contingent? I said, uh, I'm, I'm the officer. I said, can you get your men ready? Because there are three generals who are coming to see you off. Ooh. And sure enough, to send off, a second lieutenant and ten enlisted men. They came with stars and stripes coverings. And uh, that, I think, shows uh, more or less the spirit of democracy right, that yes. prevailed in that UN organization, where notwithstanding your nationality, notwithstanding your rank, right. as a group you are considered a Philippine contingent and therefore entitled to the honors of uh, arrival or send-off. Wow. That's awesome. So many important men of the history of the Korean War. Captain or uh, by spirit of patriotism, which really enhanced uh, what an experience to be fighting like that. It is something that I can be proud of. That's my yes. family and my Paolo. Yes. Being part of Pep Talk was one of Daddy's favorite episodes of his life. When he was diagnosed with cancer, the last trip he took was to Korea. Oh. He wanted to go back to the 38th parallel to Pamunjong. Wow. Just to go back and rekindle those memories. For me, that told me a lot about what he felt about being in the Korean Super country. important. Yung kabayanihan, kagitingan, katapangan ng mga Pilipino na sumabak sa Korea ay dapat marigyan ng alaala. It is a moment of remembrance, but it is also a moment of extreme pride that our fathers and my grandfather saw it fit to be part of the democratic principles of freedom, that we did what it took to keep our cherished democracy. Thank you, and thank you. And to all the soldiers that fought hand in hand, side by side, heroes 
of the pep talk, I salute you all. May the youth, like we do now, and hopefully generations to come, may they never forget the freedoms that were purchased with your blood and your sacrifice. This is the nation of World War II and the Korean War. And the Vietnam War also after the Korean War to all of us. And some of us not only suffered from all of this, but some old warriors like uh, were there. But we were happy to do our little humble participation in all of that. So this was an absolutely amazing video. I learned so much of the battles and the march that I did not know about. I did not know about. And it's just so bravery. Such bravery, such honor, such courage to fight for democracy. You know? You know? And then even the President of the Philippines sends his son, sends his son-in-law and they're willing, they want to, they want to fight into it. They believe in what they're fighting. Even if it's against all odds, against thousands and thousands and thousands of more troops and what you have, they still fought. And it's just, you need to hold these people up. You need to mem remember them, you know? You need to remember them. You can't let them be forgot because they played an important role in your life and in my life and the people's life around the world. It is what it is, you know? Could you have had bravery like that? Could I? I don't know. I don't know if I could. It takes a special kind of person, and these Filipinos that fought in the Korean War were special. Special human beings. They had something a lot of people don't have, you know? But I felt emotion while watching this. I really did. Um, it's just so important for the world history. It really is. Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts throughout the video. Some of my comments. What's your thoughts? What's your comments? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you want me to react to something and I haven't yet, definitely leave me a link down below and let me know what it is and I'll try to react to it. If you want to join the Max Reaction family, please hit the subscribe button, please share the video, and give me a thumbs up. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time. Spread that peace.